turboprop aircraft are used worldwide. However, it's almost impossible to believe that most are manufactured only in Europe or North America. Their limited range can lead to some complex, multi-leg delivery flights. Welcome to Kings of Luxury. How do turboprops get delivered to faraway located customers? Is there a possibility to deliver turboprops from France to Tahiti? Make sure to watch till the end to find out. The main commercial turboprops are the ATR-42, ATR-72, and the Dash-8. They're gathered in France and Canada. While some components are made overseas, neither company has an overseas production line, and all completed aircraft are shipped out from these two bases. Some aircraft, mainly smaller and simpler turboprops, may be shipped by land and sea, but larger aircraft are usually flown to their customer, a delivery known as ferrying. Aircraft may also require ferrying after first delivery to another buyer for maintenance checks or ultimately to storage or scrap. ATR and Dash 8 customers are located everywhere worldwide, not just in Europe and North America. The biggest customer for the ATR-72 is Wings Air in Indonesia. Amongst many others are Brazilian Airline, Azul Linhas Areas, Indian Airline, Indigo, Thai Airline, Bangkok Airways, and Air New Zealand. Major overseas clients of the Dash 8 are Kantaslink in Australia, Norwegian Airline, Windero, Japanese ANA, and Ethiopian Airlines. All these airlines need an aircraft delivered at some point. But how can they get it? The range of the ATR-72 is merely 1,404 kilometers. For the ATR-42, it's 1,302 kilometers. The Dash 8 extends this to 2,040 kilometers. Obviously, any long-distance ferry flight is going to include several stops, but there is a lot more needed than just a regular pit stop. The first thing we must remember is that the estimated range of any aircraft is based on its commercial operation. An operator can extend this range without passengers or cargo, and possibly with some interior fittings removed and shipped separately. Extra fuel tanks are also available on some aircraft. This is a commonly used technique for a minor, lighter aircraft. For example, two to four seat general aviation aircraft have an even shorter range and still often need to be ferried across large distances. To extend coverage, they'll sometimes have additional fuel storage fitted in the aircraft's main cabin. Hawaiian Airlines is known to practice this with its Boeing 717 aircraft to fly them to the mainland for delivery and service. It adds extra fuel storage in the main cabin to extend the range. But this is not a solution with larger turboprops. For instance, adding extra tanks would be practically hard and require lots of modifications. And the range is already big enough to allow possible long-distance routes with stops. The range can also be raised by flying differently. The plane will use crews at a safe top speed in commercial service. But for ferry flights, the range can be emphasized over a flight time, and a more economical cruise speed is chosen. There are also techniques for extending range in the climb and when descending. ATR even has guidance for ATR-42 and 72, explaining how different power profiles can improve efficiency. Some pilots share that the range of the ATR-72 can be increased to 3,700 kilometers and a cruise time of 8 hours. There are many examples of ferry flights with ranges much longer than the published commercial range. Azul one time has flown from Santiago, Cape Verde to Natal, Brazil as part of its ATR-72 ferry flights. This is a range of 2,639 kilometers, far more than their advertised range of 1,404 kilometers. While LIAT, based in Antigua, and Barbuda has set a record and flown its ATR-72 from Fortaleza, Brazil, direct to Antigua, an astonishing 3,448 kilometers. However, no matter how much extra range is squeezed off the aircraft, long-distance ferry flights will need many stops to refuel. Mainly, it reminds us of the good old days of early aviation, when any long-haul route would be a multiple stop or a multiple day affair. Going from the Atlantic and for flights from Canada, stops can be taken in Canada, Greenland, or Iceland before getting to the UK. For trans-Pacific routes, operators would typically pick an Atlantic route and then cross Europe and Asia. Trans-Pacific courses via Alaska are possible, but with longer distances and more challenging weather conditions. Ethiopian Airlines have used this route for Dash 8 deliveries. 
Toronto, Goose Bay, Keflavik, Manchester, Rome, Cairo, Addis Ababa. Bayman Bangladesh Airlines got a new Dash 8 in November 2020. It was a three-day route from Canada, which stops in Goose Bay, Keflavik, Rotterdam, Heraklion, and Muscat. For an extreme example, consider delivering an ATR-72 to French Polynesian airline Air Tahiti. It's a ferry from Toulouse to Papeete. As a direct flight, this could be over 16,000 kilometers. Impossible for all but the newest ultra-long haul routes coming. An ATR-72 involved seven stops. Toulouse, Cyprus, Dubai, Chennai, India, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Kupang, Indonesia, Cairns, Australia, Fiji, and Papeete. This was the longest ferry performed. As well as choosing a route and making plenty of stops, ferry flights can be planned to take full advantage of the weather. For instance, with solid headwinds, the range will be significantly decreased. The range will be scheduled around winds for some areas, or the aircraft will merely wait until proper conditions. The jet stream has a significant effect on any long-distance flight. These air currents stream from west to east moving easterly flights faster than westerly ones. This will specifically affect transatlantic flights to the Americas, which may need more stops than the other way. As with regular commercial flights, the route and flight level can be chosen to use the advantage of the jet stream or minimize the impact. It only makes sense to wait until jet stream conditions are proper. And it certainly does for other weather conditions too. Minimizing weather risk is important with operations closer to the limits and fewer diversion airports in remote regions. At this point, you may be wondering how some of these flights and routes are possible. There are limitations placed on twin-engine operations and turboprops. The ATR-42 and 72 both have ETOPS 120 ratings, allowing them to fly up to 120 minutes from a suitable diversion airport. However, the Dash 8 does not have an enhanced ETOPS rating. This leaves them large parts of oceanic areas inaccessible for regular routes. Also, aircraft do not need to meet these ETOPS requirements on a ferry flight. Therefore, they can fly farther from diversion airports. This is permitted since the flights are not commercial. Ferry flying is known to be dangerous and a risky undertaking. This is true for smaller aircraft, but there is still some risk for pushing larger turboprops limits. Ferry flights mean flying close to range limits, dealing with varied weather, and using remote and often more tricky airports. Risks are much higher with smaller aircraft. Light aircraft have even shorter ranges, again, extended using additional fuel and economical flying, and fly much lower, so they encounter more extreme weather. Transatlantic routes in such an aircraft are a life-dangering risk. However, ferry flying pushes the limits of turboprop and makes for some exciting routes. But what do you think? Is it exciting to see those magnificent routes created with ferry flights? Or is it a challenge not worth risking your life for? Share your opinion in the comments section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload. And you can enjoy the excellent content we send your way.